One plus one is two. This is one of the first things we learn when exploring the topic of math. And at the same time, we might think, how do we prove that this is true? See, that's a really important question to ask. Mathematics is based on fundamental definitions known as axioms. Yet throughout our standard education, we are not taught what those definitions are, even though it is at the core of this field. And so, in this video, we will go over why, or how, 1 plus 1 equals 2, proving the most basic arithmetic equation in mathematics. If we search proof that 1 plus 1 equals 2 on Google, we get a direct excerpt from Principia Mathematica. But looking at this, we can't really tell what anything means here. Principia Mathematica is an encyclopedia defining the building blocks of math. In essence, what this writing is saying is, taking the ideas that we defined previously, we can show that 1 plus 1 is 2. But in all honesty, looking at this won't really give you an idea of why 1 plus 1 is 2. Alright then, let's go back to our equation. We can notice that there are three main components to this equation. The numbers 1 and 2, which are often what we refer to as natural numbers, the addition symbol, and this equal symbol. To truly understand what this equation implies, we need to define all three of these symbols. Notably, equality, natural numbers, and addition. Let's start with this equal symbol, equality. There are three properties that this symbol holds. The names for these properties are not that important. First, we have the reflexive property. For any quantity a, a equals a. Next, we have the symmetric property. For any two quantities a and b, if a equals b, then we have that b equals a. Imagine some equation a equals b. Flipping a and b still maintains the equality of this equation. Finally, we have the transitive property. For any quantities a, b, and c, if a equals b and b equals c, then a equals c. You can imagine this as a triangle. If a equals b and b equals c, it can be implied that a equals c. These points are pretty obvious for someone that knows basic arithmetic, but it is really important that we define these properties because we will need to use these later. Moving on, we need to define natural numbers. Number one, zero exists. So we first start by stating that zero exists in this set of natural numbers. Now it is often debatable whether zero is a natural number or not, but for the sake of our purposes, we will say that zero is in this set of natural numbers. Number two, every number has a succeeding number. For instance, we know that the succeeding number of 0 is 1, the succeeding number of 1 is 2, and so on. For today's purpose, let's define the successor of some number a to be defined as s of a. So the successor of the successor of a is defined as s s of a, and so on. Number three, number two is false for zero. When showing one plus one equals two, we don't need to consider the existence of negative numbers. So all of this, we don't need to consider. And so we need to make sure to state that there exists no number whose succeeding is zero. Number four, different numbers, different successors. In other words, no two numbers have the same successor. If they do, they must be the same number. Mathematically, if the successor of a 
equals the successor of B, then A must equal B. Let's look at these three cases. The first case satisfies our definition. Different numbers, different successors. Each number has its own successor that does not overlap with one another and goes on. In our second case, this is not true. For this number, there are two numbers whose successors equals the same number, which would imply that this has to be equal to zero. But zero cannot have a successor. So this example cannot be true. As our third example, we have two branches that lead to one same number. And the only way for this to hold true is if the previous numbers are equal to each other. So these two numbers have to be equal to each other and these two numbers have to be equal to each other. In any case, we don't need to consider these numbers then. So this puts us back to our first line. Number five, if zero has some property that A also has, where A is a number, then the successor of A also has that same property. Essentially, this is a foundational idea to what we commonly refer to as induction. But in simpler terms, all this is saying is that if zero is in the set of natural numbers, then for every natural number A in the same set, the successor of A is also a natural number. Think of a very large bag with all the natural numbers. If zero is inside it, and if A is inside it, then by this definition, we also know that the successor of A must also be in the set of natural numbers. And so this defines our natural numbers. And finally, we can move on to defining addition. And this is actually the simplest of all three. For every number that satisfies our definitions that we posed, so for every natural number, let us first state that a plus zero equals a. And this is exactly why we define the existence of zero. What this does is it simplifies our equation by removing the plus operation. So here we have the plus operation. But here, there is no plus operation. So we need to add another definition that can create zero without complicating the equation further. Let this be the property that for any a plus the successor of b be equal to the successor of a plus b. The second property attempts to create zero by making a number closer to zero inside of itself. In this case, b is closer to zero than the successor of b, so we can then see if the first rule can be used to take the addition operator away from this equation. If not, we can always use this second property again until we can make zero. Finally, let's give a name for these numbers. Let's say that the successor of zero is equal to one, and the successor of the successor of zero be equal to 2. Now we are done with our definitions and can prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Let's start with 1 plus 1. And 1 is the successor of 0, so let's rewrite that as the successor of 0 plus the successor of 0. Now let's consider the successor of 0 as a and this 0 as b. So using this formula here, we get that this is equal to the successor of a, which is the successor of zero, plus b, which is zero. And using the fact that any a plus zero equals a, we can cancel this zero, leaving us with the successor of the successor of zero, which if we refer to the definition is equal to two. Therefore, these two can be connected by an equal sign, meaning that 1 plus 1 
equals 2. And we have finished our proof. And actually, now that we have proven that 1 plus 1 equals 2, we can prove other simple additions as long as we define each number in terms of a successor of some other number. So say we write the successor of the successor of the successor of 0 to be equal to 3. Then with a similar method, we can prove that 1 plus 2 equals 3. When we name each number, we chose that the successor of 0 is 1, and the successor of the successor of 0 is 2. But if we were to redefine the successor of 0 is equal to 2, and the successor of the successor of 0 is equal to 1, then what we'd end up with is we can change these numerical values to 2 plus 2, and this would end up as 1. And so instead of 1 plus 1 equals 2, we'd end up with the proof that 2 plus 2 equals 1. And that's what I want everyone to take from this lecture. We went over defining properties of equality, natural numbers, and addition to prove that 1 plus 1 equals 2. But in the end, all of those definitions are something that we chose. In math, the fundamental axioms are ideas that we just define to exist, like the concept of infinity, to align mathematics to be used to solve a problem. And today, we created a set of definitions to show how 1 plus 1 equals 2. But in the end, that's all based on the specific definitions that we have created. And that ends this lesson. Thank you for watching.